There is a game that exists on Atari consoles in a world of duality. A game that is both beloved and hated. A game that is fondly remembered and also infamous. And it all depends which version of this game you first experience. As a computer game, Karatika, or Karatika, I don't know. The pronunciation is a little messed up. I'm gonna call it what I've always called it. Karatika was incredibly fluid and cinematic for its time. It was a game that pushed realism and fluid combat over all else. It introduced a very unique and intriguing core of gameplay that has grabbed and kept fans enthralled even to this very day. But there is also a console version of Karatika on the Atari 7800 that represents the dashed hopes and profound disappointment that people still regard the console with to this very day. In this edition of Dare to Compare, we're going to see if the Atari 8-bit version of Karatika is still as good as people once said it was, and if the 7800 version is still a hot piece of garbage that helped to bury the console. So let's get into it. Let's dare to compare Karatika for the Atari 7800 and Atari 8-bit computers. Karatika was a groundbreaking game for its time, and is still impressive to behold to this very day. Well, I guess it depends which version you're looking at. Karatika was developed by Jordan Mechner, famed video game programmer, back in December of 1984 for the Apple II computer. It was later ported to the Commodore 64, Famicom, MSX computers, and literally, tons of other platforms. But today we're looking at the Atari 8-bit versions released in 1985, and the Atari 7800 version that was released in 1988. These are the versions that Atari fans had available to them, and we're going to look at the games in the context of playing them today. But first, I wanted to see how hard they were to obtain physically for these two platforms. Right now, on eBay, there are 76 copies of Atari 7800 Karatika, and they aren't selling very fast. You can grab them for about $7 plus shipping for card only, or $30 for complete in box or sealed in box. However, at the time of this recording, there are only 8 results for Atari 8-bit versions of the game. I tried searching for Atari 8-bit Karatika, Atari Computer Karatika, Atari 400, 800 Karatika, etc., and I really couldn't produce any more search results. And the game is going for, well, over $100. There's even a sealed XEGS re-release copy for $700. Yikes. And that happens to be the version that we're looking at today because I have the XEGS to play the 8-bit versions on. Now this is really irrelevant, I guess, as to which one is better, or how they compare, but I thought it was worth noting that one is widely available, and another seems to be harder to find. But anyway, it's time to get on to the game proper. Graphically, while Karatika looks different depending on what platform you're playing it on, it still maintains a distinct style throughout each version. It's apparent just from the design of the game that realism and authenticity was a goal of the original product. The characters in both versions move in a way that's fluid and makes sense. Video game physics are not present here. Your characters can't and won't jump impossibly high without the aid of momentum, or at all. The fighters don't do super moves or shoot fireballs. Everything is stemmed from real life karate. The backgrounds are pretty cool, and our hero is presented as climbing a cliff in both games and then begins an all-out assault on the temple to rescue his beloved. Cutscenes are present in both versions as well, but the Atari 8-bit version is definitely more cinematic. More love and care was taken overall with that version. Akuma, the evil kidnapper of your beloved, looks massive and intimidating in the XEGS version. But on the 7800, he's just a laughably average man. And he looks just like everybody else, no less. What a disappointment. The 8-bit version looks smoother overall as well. The graphics don't have the jagged lines of the 7800, although both games animate smoothly. Characters run convincingly in both games and fight in a way that looks and feels sort of realistic. Well, as realistic as the time could allow. Both games lack any real definition in the face, but they both still manage to look good. Audio is a bit of a conundrum as the Atari 8-bit slash XEGS version has a distinct advantage over the 7800. 
The 7800 version uses the stock TIA chip, and they were still able to get some decent sounds out of it. The songs and music are kinda catchy, but, well, extremely short. You also got some popping, thumping sound effects from various kicks and punches that are being performed, but overall, each one sounds exactly the same. It's nothing to write home about, but given the console that it's on, well, the sound in the 7800 version isn't bad. There's no doubt that the Atari 8-Bits has superior sound capabilities, but somehow they managed to keep it pretty similar even on the 7800. There's no doubting that the quality is going to be better overall on the XEGS. But most of Karataka, especially during the gameplay, is, well, fairly silent. The XEGS version does employ different sound effects depending if your hits connect or miss, but again, it's similar to the 7800. I think most people were prefer the XEGS sound effects overall, but take a listen and see for yourself. Moving on to gameplay, this is where things will really split off between the two games. Overall, the XEGS slash 8-bit version is just objectively better. You're gonna have a very different experience depending on which version you're trying. But the XEGS version, well, you're gonna get a true feeling of depth in the gameplay. The developer was trying to make a realistic karate sim within the limitations of the time, and I think he did fairly well. Now, not everything works great, but most of it is done in such a way that the gameplay and playability is mostly put first and done well. You still get knocked out in a single hit if you're not careful, but it's definitely less likely to happen in the computer version. Your strikes and ability to switch between them is more fluid as well in the XEGS slash 8-bit version. I was able to perform multiple kicks and punches in succession and do it, well, with responsive controls. Not perfectly responsive, mind you, but responsive enough that I could adapt to it, play it, and best of all, have fun. I also felt pretty powerful while playing it. It felt rewarding to string together several kicks and punches, and I just enjoyed it. But the 7800 version, on the other hand, feels poorly executed to put nicely. You always start out in your non-combat stance, and this results in a KO or two before you even figure out the controls. Trust me, everybody will run forward, get knocked out, and be returned to the title screen within a few seconds on your first playthrough. But once you do understand the controls and how to get into your karate stance, you still have to struggle with sluggish, unresponsive button presses as your hero throws punches and kicks an eternity after you hit the buttons. And the 7800 version has very little in the way of gameplay variety. The challenge comes in ever-dwindling life bars that put you at a massive disadvantage while going toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemies, although you only ever fight one enemy at a time. The 8-bit version feels like a cohesive adventure with in-game cutscenes playing while you're still in control, giving life to the world and presenting you with a fluid challenge. The 7800 version does have cutscenes that plays, but mostly you'll fight one enemy per screen and move on. There's nothing else to it. So to keep things short and to the point, the XEGS slash 8-bit version of the game is where you can learn to play and have fun with it. It's a great challenge and pretty intuitive to play. But the 7800 version is a frustrating and overall poor experience, and one that the console honestly needed to be a good release at the time. Unfortunately, it wasn't, and Karateka on the 7800, well, it's just bad. So, what's the determination here? Well, the superior game is the Atari computer one. And really, this comparison is just for fun's sake, as literally any version will destroy the 7800 release. The 7800 game of Karataka is just notoriously bad, and if you don't believe me, well, get out $7 and try it for yourself. It's hard to control, hard to play, and hard to get anywhere with. But that's just my opinion. The XEGS slash Atari 8-bit version wins. And I think it's the opinion of most people that I've talked to. But with all that said, I'm ready to hear your opinion. What's your favorite version of Karataka between these two games, and what's your favorite release of Karataka overall? Do you agree with my comparison, or did I miss something crucial? And do you own any versions of this game? 
If so, do you enjoy it? Let me know about all this and more in the comments down below. And please, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We put out videos all about Atari stuff, new and old, so hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. Also, consider following me on these social medias and join the Discord server to talk Atari with your fellow Atarians. And please consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member. For $2 to $5 a month, you get access to exclusive content and help to grow the channel. These following classy Atarians already have done just that, and I couldn't possibly thank them enough. And with all that, it's time to wrap up another video here on the Atari Network. I've been the 7800 Pro Gamer, a karate guy who does karate things, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. And please remember to stay classy, Atarians.